Well, an endangered species is a beast considered highly likely to become extinct in the near future. Fending increasingly for themselves, they're put at risk by the loss of territory. Their plight is made worse by ruthless poachers who often want to bring them down as a trophy to their own prowess. Sadly, these big beasts are sometimes too deluded to realise that it's already over. It's only the poor marksmanship of the hapless hunters that spares them their futures. Stanley Johnson is here. You're not talking politics, <laughs> are you? <laughs> Fierce. Stanley, I'm obviously talking uh, trophy hunting and endangered species. No, let's start first of I, all. I sensed a trap. It's not a trap. Uh, let's just be completely upfront about this. Talking of endangered species uh, who may be facing yeah. possible end. Your son, Boris. I have to ask you about it because he won't come on the show. I've I'm, I'm in, interviewed him in seven years. Now, let's talk, if I'm right, about endangered species. Well, we will. Okay. But let's talk about Boris first. All right. Then we'll come to the trophy yeah. and, and your book. I'm just curious. You're his dad, right? He's been through one hell of a yeah. period in his life. He becomes prime minister. He gets Brexit done. He's then hit by a global pandemic. He's hit by a war in Ukraine. Uh, he's hit by all sorts of stuff, surging inflation now. In the middle of it, he gets COVID and nearly dies. His mother dies. You put all this together, that's a hell of a two and a half years for any human being. As his father, when you've watched him go through all this, what have you been thinking? I've been thinking I am very proud of this boy, of this man, of this PM. I mean, that, that's what I say to myself. I mean, he caught, you know, the big calls right, and as far as I'm concerned, he's got a lot of things right. You know, OK, I'm an environmentalist. I think the way he pushed on climate change, the way he pushed on biodiversity, the way he pushed, if we get to it, to, to this issue about endangered species, yeah. it's fine. And honestly, you know, if you're asking me my, my absolute opinion on this, I'd say, I'd say, I, I, I listened to what, you, what, what Imran Khan said to you the mm. other day. You know, people in, in Karachi are, are bewildered at the attention which this, this party gate Beer gate or yeah, something. but you know why it's, had, it's, yeah. it's rattled people. The, the party gate is not really about parties, no. right? You and I have been to a lot it's, of parties together, just... right? It's not, about, it's not about the parties. Yeah. It's about the, at the time when he and his government were locking people in their homes and yeah. they couldn't go and see dying relatives who were literally dying in hospital from COVID. That was the rule, the law. When the Queen was at her own husband's yeah. funeral, sitting on her own because she wanted to abide by the letter yeah. of the law... There is Boris, the Prime Minister, being fined by the police for breaking his own law, oh. and 84 of his staff fined for hold illegal on, party. On, yes. So that's the scandal. No, well, I don't actually see it in that, in, in that way, because I see it as something that happened on the, 19th of, on the 19th of June 2020, which was just a few weeks after he came out of, out of hospital, having been really seriously ill. Mm. He steps by for, for 20 minutes, it's his birthday. It wasn't a birthday party, as he I know. He broke his own law, Stanley. Yeah, come on. We come did. on, Piers. We're not done. Well, don't don't done take here. my word for it. Take the police's word for it. OK. I think that that is time. It is time to move on from that. You know, it, it, it was a situation where, yes, he has a drink. He well, this had a glass in his hand. And that was it. That was the end of it. Yeah, but it's not yeah. about the drink, is it? It's about yeah. having a party which breaks his own rules. Hey, hey, Piers. When, other, when he was telling other yeah. people every day from the podium, you can't do this. It's the doing one thing and preaching another. Now, Piers, you know that. look, I know you're in charge of this interview and no reason why you shouldn't be because, you know, you're the, you're the big cheese. But I didn't come here. You know, as far as I'm concerned, it's high time mm -hmm. we moved on to things which really matter, which are the things he is doing now. Do you see? It's the things he's doing, doing and, you, and, you, and you mentioned them. You know, COVID, let's hope that's out of the way. Inflation, he's got to deal with it. Ukraine, Ukraine. Well, who is taking the lead on Ukraine? I think he's been good on Ukraine. Yeah. I, I do. I think Boris yeah. has been... I think he's been a leader on Ukraine. And on the big calls, on COVID, yeah. I think he got some right and some horribly wrong. I thought the first half of it, he was a complete disaster. The second half, I thought, with the vaccine programme rolled out and not locking down, actually at the end of the last year, I think they were two important calls he got right. It, Britain feels a much freer country right now than if you go abroad. So you know, I think he's got some of the calls yeah, right. But the, the idea is he's got all the big calls right well, I don't, is a bit ridiculous, right? I don't think I said that. I think, he's, he's, I think he's got, you know, many of the big calls right, and that's, that, I think, is crucial. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I am, because you asked me the question, mm. I am particularly pleased 
to see this son of mine being Prime Minister, whether well, other sons will be Prime Minister, another matter. But I am very, very pleased about this, and long may he last. Stanley, when you see him being you know, attacked repeatedly for being dishonest, yeah. for being amoral, all those things, what do you feel about it? You I, know him better than most people. Yeah, this is what I feel. I feel this is all a lot of garbage. I mean, total garbage. I see this as the worst kind of journalism. I'm not going to name the journalists. I hope I don't have to meet them. But honestly, I think it's, and I think it's tinged with, look, it's a hunting scene, isn't it? We're going to get on to hunting. We are going to get on to hunting, yeah. It's a hunting scene. There we are. They think the beast is wounded. Let's gallop after him. Let's fire a shoot, few more shots. It is, it is absurd. We have to move Is he irreparably wounded by the fact that 42% of Conservative MPs don't have confidence in him? No, I don't think it's on contrary. If you look at the figures, more Conservative MPs voted in a confidence vote for Boris Johnson than have ever voted for a, for a Conservative Prime Minister in any confidence vote. Look at the figures. Now, it may be that's because there were more Conservative MPs to vote. That's why. OK, that's why. But why were there more Conservative MPs? It was because On they the percentage won... share, that, that doesn't work. Leave the percentage out of it. Leave the sheer numbers. Well, the percentage the... is all that matters, isn't it? Sheer numbers got that result, and you cannot deny that. The, the, the 368 Tory MPs who were elected in... 2019 were elected. You know, I mean, you're, you're, you're a Boris. sharp political animal. You know that actually the stats are now heavily against him. Hardly any Conservative Prime Minister has ever survived much longer than six months from a no-confidence vote, even if they, they all win them. But the margin of the win is what brings them down. Yeah, let me tell you something. I am completely confident that this time, two years from now, you and I will be having this conversation, mm. possibly, and you will be saying, well, you're still the father of Prime Minister then, Stanley. You know what? You've, that might be true. I'm not saying necessarily yeah. that should be what happens, but I think you might be right. He has got the escapology skills of Harry Houdini, hasn't he? Houdini, as I recall, eventually died because someone... He did. Struck, <laughs> ..struck him in the tummy rather I'm hard. I'm not mentioning Jeremy Hunt, but, you know, you've got to be careful who's <laughs> around him at the moment. Um, look... We need to concentrate on the main things. As far as I'm concerned, why I'm here tonight is there's a crucial moment when this government, and I'm not criticising my Prime Minister, I'm mm -hmm. not doing that, but nonetheless, just to show I am not, as it were, starry-eyed, I am deeply worried that the proposal the government um, has promised to make regarding banning trophy hunting yeah. imports has not yet seen the light of day. Well, let's it be quite needs clear on that, because I agree day. with you about trophy yeah. hunting. I think it's a disgusting thing, and it shouldn't be allowed to happen. Boris said he was going to get rid of it, and he hasn't. So he's gone back on his word. Well, it's... To in, you, no. Stanley. <laughs> it's in the, the word. It was the word as it appeared in the Conservative Party manifesto. And if you ask the government about it, the government says firmly, we are still But have you committed. talked to him privately about this? I don't go into what I say privately mm. to my son, and I wouldn't expect him to say what he says to me, mm. you know, on air. But nonetheless, on this sort of thing, I would prefer to speak out loud to you peers yes. in the privacy of this studio, yes. if you see what I mean, and yeah. say the government has to move on this, because I don't want to say... And for those who haven't followed the, the, uh, this whole saga, what is it exactly, you and a lot of signatories to a letter, want to get what done? OK. Trophy hunting is still massively practised all around the world, and by the way, British sportsmen are massively involved in trophy hunting, and we have a time when endangered species are truly endangered. And we've got the animals, we've got... Uh, 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 zebras, lions and rhinos, lions, and they're all... Rhinos. I agree. They're all, they're all there. And yet people are still getting prizes from the Safari Club International, you know, for killing 100 different species of animals. And people are paying $50,000 to Absolutely. fly in from America, from Absolutely. Minnesota. Yeah. We saw the Cecil the Lion. Uh, Absolutely. You know, uh, so I want the government to really deliver on its promise to bring in this law banning the import of, 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 of trophies. And also, I want the government to push hard now on this other thing, which is again in the manifesto, mm. which is to do with animals abroad and the fact that British tourists are going off in huge numbers mm. post-COVID to places like Thailand and India and other places where animals are abused for spectacles and entertainment, particularly Stanley, we have reached a point of agreement, although I would point out on trophy hunting... Yeah, look at this. Look it's at also that. a prime example of your, of your son saying one thing and not doing it. No, he has got every chance to do it. That is the point. If he's watching this programme, what's your message well, sure to him about trophy hunting? Sure, he watches, watches you every, every day. Well, he never comes on it.
Well, I can't speak Somebody to that. get out of the fridge and get on here. I can't speak to that. But I am, <laughs> I am convinced that environment remains a top priority of this government. Mm -hmm. Climate change remains a top priority. Biodiversity remains. And animal species okay. is there. You've got a great new book out from an antique yeah. land. You've written how many books now? Huh? Uh, this is my 25th. Unbelievable. Where yeah. do you get the energy, you Johnsons? No, I don't have any energy at huh? all. No, no, no. Relentless, no, isn't it? No, it's a very nice thing to say. That is a thriller. That is a thriller, and it's all to do with what happened in Cambodia in 1975. I look forward to reading it. I like all your books. The, I wanted to show you a, a bit of footage. This is of a, cock, uh, a cockerel in Turkey. This is the moment, Stanley, where I think you and I, probably Boris as well, have a moment, don't we, occasionally, when you just want to do this. Watch this cockerel. That's not the, you sure that's not the call? <laughs> it's not the famous but, Johnson mating call. I, no. I think it could be the call of the Muet Sin if it comes from Turkey. <laughs> Watch the end, though, Stan. You see what happens at the end here. It's going, it's going. Now, the last time, the last time I saw a magnificent beast like that doing something similar was when <laughs> you came on Good Morning Britain and we got you to do a handstand. Do you remember this? Oh, come on. I do remember. It's really sensible. Yep. Oh, oh my oh, goodness! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> one, one again, one again. No, that's enough. Oh, I've got him, I've got him. Oh, there he is. Oh All goodness. the money. There, oh, my God, his money's falling out. <laughs> well, Let me get you down gently, What Stanley. I meant to say to you, Dennis, I <laughs> always like to put my money where my mouth is. <laughs> I failed to say it then, I'm happy to say it now. Stanley, it's great to see you. Uh, as always, an effervescent presence. And you are a cheater, I've got to tell you, Piers. You know, you lured me in here. It was a bit like Cecil the Lion. Are you, you lured me in I'm here. A, I'm a trophy hunter. I lured right. him a well, trophy. Well, I, I don't think I'm a trophy. You know but what? Anyway. There's nothing wrong with defending your son, by the way. And we got to talk about trophy hunting and yeah. your book. And I showed you doing a handstand. The words <laughs> you're looking for, Stanley, are thank you, Piers. Good to see you. See you all, folks. Tell Boris to come in soon. <laughs> We'd have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Stanley. Good to Cheers. see you. I think he's going to get Boris out of the fridge, get him on the show.